Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back again. Uh, my name is Ms. Nabuntu D-I-V-A-A, Divinely Inspired, Vibrantly Anointed, and let me just get into this week's Yanla Fix My Life uh, reflection. This is, this is, I don't, I'm not sure what this is. I think it's either season 10 or it's cycle 10, but it's season 7. But either way, we're on episode 2 of the most recent and most brand new season of Ianla Fix My Life. So this story starts with Ianla saying, this is a story about a mother who abandoned her children without explanation. And she also says that the book, this, this particular example of this story that we are now looking at ourselves through and studying so that we can reflect in our own lives, not so that we can judge those people whom we don't know. It's an example for you to reflect on your life. So she says, this particular example of this family this week is that it's a book chapter inverse of if you want to look at the end, look at the beginning. So the saying would usually say, if you want to understand the end start at the beginning, but it's the inverse. And then what you find when you do that is that you will then find that what is at the end and at the beginning, if there's anybody else or anything else in between, it, it runs through all of that on or through all those people as well. And that just had me thinking about, you know, my, I guess, you know, in a family dynamic, if you're looking at the elder sibling to the younger sibling or the inverse which is the younger sibling to the elder sibling and then in between you will see what uh, you will then know that the trickle down effect is happening in between from the end to the beginning or the beginning to the end depending on whether it's the inverse or the version or not. In this family she starts out asking them why they are here so it's the mother and she has eight children, but only three of her children are there, an Emily, a Christopher, and a Christian. And she's with, she's also there with her husband, Demetrius, who's like 31 and she's 47. <laughs> so the, they, the mother articulates it very well. She says, you know, they both say with Demetrius, the husband, that we are here because we thought we were, we were at a point where all the children are grown and we were now looking forward to being parents to grown children who've moved out the house and then um, grandparents and just us being in our relationship. But what's happening is that these children are still in the house and that that's what they tell Iyanla is the reason why they are there at the show, to manage the children. So in the beginning with the entire, all of the family that is present, which is three out of eight children are present and the two parents. Um, the 31 year old obviously is not a biological parent to the children. It's only the mother who's a biological parent to the children that are there. But the five of them are now there. And so obviously some siblings are missing for whatever reason. At the beginning, now they're all sitting as that family of five and they're voicing their concerns. And you know, um, the the oldest voices to the the sister that you know I am concerned that you will birth eight you know seven eight kids just like our mom did and then not be able to keep up with them um, and then the sister says she has learned everything that she doesn't want from her mom. All of them actually are diverting and they're being dishonest about what they're actually there for. Uh, so the mother says, diversion tactic. She has a concern about raising adults as opposed to the truth, which is why the mother left her children without an explanation at some point in their lives when they were young and how that wounded them and how it hurt them. That's why they're all there. But they're pointing to all these other things that are not it, that are not the truth, which is avoidance and being dishonest about what the problem is. 
and you know in reflection I am thinking about how much people will say the problem is this and the problem is not that it's actually something else this is a symptom of a root what you say is a problem is a symptom of a root but actually the problem is something completely different and then it culminates in a certain fruit of a certain way but that's not actually what the problem what's the seed and that it had me thinking about that that there's a you know where do problems come from something that happened at some point and they are an act out or a symptom of something that happened or an outgrowth, outgrowth of something that happened. So people say, oh, this is, they talk about the outgrowth instead of talking about what caused this outgrowth. Where did this come from? It, it turns out the mother left the children, the, the, well, when the eldest brother was 12, she left and without explanation apparently to go to California for a job opportunity. So Iyala has different words on cards and she assigns, she, she, she asks them to choose a word to pick for each of themselves. So some pick dishonesty, some pick unaccountable, some pick angry, some pick, you know, disrespectful. So all of them are now sitting with these cards. Um, and Iyanla takes all these cards and puts them on the lap of the mother because she's the original mother. She's the only original mother there. I believe if there were two parents, biological parents there, she would put all those cards at the lap of both biological parents. So that's what she does. And, and she says that their dysfunction is years of damage caused by the mother so all these um traits of either disrespect or dishonesty or bottling things up whatever cards they've picked she takes them and she says the mother's responsible for that because all that that is now going on with them is as a result of years of their of the damage caused by the mother um, and this had me thinking about the tendency of parents to dissociate from the ch it, it had me thinking about the tendency for parents to dissociate from the damage they cause to their children. So your child will be acting out and acting a whole damn fool. And you're acting like you absolutely don't know why this child is acting this way. I think it is... Um, the exception and not the rule that sometimes children grow up and they're just acting out and there's really no connection to because you did this that's the exception and rare rarity to the rule the rule is a child is acting out as a result of something that a parent has done and um, and it just had me just thinking about how much parents like like I was saying last week they like to have you praise them for the wonderful things they did which is to clothe you shelter you put food on the table send you to school which are things they were supposed to do if they had brought children into this world those are basics but they want you to focus on their successes but they don't want you to call them out on their failures in the process of bringing you up uh, they, they don't want you to call them to account for their failures, failures on the process of bringing you up. They don't want to be held accountable for the wounds and the hurt that they caused you. This theme comes back again of parents dissociating from their wounds and the hurt that they inflict on their children. Ianla sits with the mother. So the mother is still in their private consult and coaching by themselves she's still focused on getting clear with her husband so that they can focus on the, their children and then focus on the grandkids with everyone kind of out of the house and you know she she's her her desires and her, and her reason for being there she's saying i want help to be able to manage my life so that 
it's uh, it's going according to the order that it's supposed to go that they're supposed to be out of the house by now and i'm supposed to just be thinking about adult children that are out of the house with their grand with their with my grandchildren that will then maybe just come and visit me now and then right that's what she articulates so they talk a little bit about that and then you know um, but Iyana keeps pointing out to her, well, you know, all of that cannot be in order and be balanced out and holistic if there's wounds and there's uh, grievances that your children have with you that have not been aired and have not been voiced. So, again, this had me thinking about how as parents get older and they, <clears throat> you know, into their, into their, into their later years, they really just want peace and they don't want to be bothered and they trying to get that in order but at the cost of still being unaccountable for the wounds and the hurt they cause their children the grievances that their children might have towards them um, they're more concerned about I just want peace I just want to settle down I just want to settle down into old age and enjoy that but they leave a mess behind of the wounding and the hurting they cause their children and they don't work on that before settling down into enjoyment of old age so it had me thinking about that and then Iana moved on to sit with the sister who is 21 the daughter um and the daughter you know she talks about a little bit about herself about how she kind of keeps things inside and she's a bit sad. Yana picks up that sadness. Um, and she's 21. She's She has one baby and she has another baby on the way. Yana asks her what her dream was. And she says, you know, my dream was to be a nurse. But now I'm, I'm going to have to give, I'm giving all that up to focus on my children. And I like what Yana says next. She calls her out on that. And she says, Focus on being there for you. Don't give up your life for your children. Children are portable. And she gives her an example of, you know, she, Iana had had kids by the time she was, three kids by the time she was 21. And she only started going after her law degree at around about 30. And if she had to take those children to class and them sitting on the floor and her being in class that's what would happen and i really like that because i remember just not too long ago having a conversation with a friend and you know uh, she was just saying you know now she's just focused on the children and she that's all that she's living for and i really wanted to tell her no no you you invite them into your life to tag along in your life to participate in your life until they can go off and have their own life and in in that invitation you don't abandon them you don't under nurture them you don't under cultivate them but they come in children come into your life you don't drop your life and then attend to their life and forget about your life to pick it up at some time and then hold it over their head later on and say well I gave up my life for you for 20 years I really wanted to have that conversation with her to say, I would suggest you don't give your life up for your children, but that you integrate your life with your children's life and invite them into your life. And because like Iyanla said, they are portable, they can be taken anywhere you need to go and and you can do whatever you need to do. Um, and they can be take, brought along to take along with it doesn't they, then it doesn't mean that at any point you need to give up your life so um, it I guess for me in hearing her say that Iyanla Miss Iyanla say that it really confirmed what I really wanted to say to my friend that the time the day she was saying oh my life is about my kids now I'm like Ugh, that means that you're only gonna pick up on your life like around about 50 or 55 why are you giving up your 40s for your kids 40s should be a fun time um but i didn't say it because i didn't want to overstep i didn't want to give any unsolicited anything and i don't want people saying you're not a mother so you wouldn't know how it feels to want to give up your entire life and dedicate it to your children so i didn't say anything but i honestly believe that 
people shouldn't have to give up their lives and their dreams and their visions and their hopes and their you know and 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 their plans and their goals for their life when children arrive these children arrive and you are already here and you've already been here and you've already been living life there's no reason for you to give up what you've been doing while she is talking to the yana's talking to the daughter you know she gets a report that the mother is in breakdown and so she goes and attends to the mother and the mother says i want to tell you something but i don't want to i don't know she doesn't want to have it aired i guess so yana's like nope you don't get to dictate what gets seen and what doesn't get seen again if you are applying for a process you don't get to dictate what you're gonna do and what you're not gonna do in the process you walk into the process and you hand yourself over to the process and you you ride the wave of the process and see it through and then you'll see at the end that mm, it wasn't useful that I didn't get to get my way here 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 and there you'll see at the end but 99.9% .9 when you go through a process the way that it's designed and the way that it's been tested tried and tested and been proven to be a successful process when you go through it the way that it has been prescribed it usually works um, it usually renders the results that it promises so the mom is saying she you know obviously this came up from the depths of her heart that um she had experienced some abuse some sexual abuse touched by strangers and how then from that her voice was stolen and she was violated this is now the mother's story coming up as she's exploring her accountability um in abandoning her children um, so she, and, and so she says that experience in her she's explaining the experience to her to Iyana now that she ended up with she then ran from that situation because in that situation what her mother taught her is that you protect who abuses you you protect who's around you meaning you protect who abuses you and what she ended up doing as a mother she a young person she ran from that situation but in running she ended up in a situation with a man who abused her she ran towards a man and recreated the same thing that she was running from and that had me thinking again because when you don't heal something and you run away from it it does just because you run away from it and you don't process through it and you don't heal through it it doesn't change just because you changed environments you have to heal it and process through it and um, work through it until <clears throat> it is no longer a sore point it is no longer a wound that is gaping open but that is sewn up and is healed from that experience with the mother I got that what you don't heal you recreate somehow in some form shape or way you recreate what you don't heal next up Iyala sits with the 31 year old Demetrius the husband to the 47 year old wife you know again Demetrius is like look I thought the plan was it's almost like this retirement not late life plan I would say it's almost like it was um, for him what he ex he anticipated coming into the relationship was okay the children are grown and so now I'm coming in as just you know a young one dating an older woman but helping her where she needs but you know that that's not going to be the predominant feature of their relationship and that they are going to be enjoyment of each other is going to be the predominant feature of their relationship and that's not the case there's still children in the house for me what I can say is that the dynamic between the husband and the wife is almost the same as the dynamic between the mother and her children the dynamic of the wife with to the husband to Demetrius 
is similar to me with the dynamic of the mother to her wounded and her children from her leaving them and abandoning them when they were young. So a dynamic where they overpowered, they're unheard, their voices are unheard and the message that they receive is that they don't matter. Um, so in some ways it's, it's a dishonorable dynamic and Iyanla's having a conversation with him about how in this dynamic he's kind of given away his power and he dishonors and disrespects himself he dishonors and disrespects himself and um you know he he the plan for him is to learn to put his foot down thoughts about that he's 31 she's 47 an age gap like that creates a dynamic of the oldest person has slightly more power than you and gets to kind of overpower you uh and has right to because of they're older than you so i think the age difference plays into the dynamic of him feeling like of dishonoring himself and allowing himself to be disrespected and not being able to put himself down also that he's not the biological father to these children so you know he's juggling that and i get that so next up at the end of that day one iana separates the husband and the wife Everybody's gonna go to a hotel room and yeah, no one is going to interact with each other. They return the next morning and the first person that Iala speaks to is the mother and she asks her on her reflections from last night. And her reflection is that, you know, she was crying and she had been congested with, you know, pain and confusion all these years as both a mother, as both a wife and as both the 12 year old. 12 year old who has been running her life because her pain was not resolved her pain was not attended to so her, her that 12 year old has been running rampant so again what you don't heal you recreate and it shows up and it controls your life you know um i like what ian said because it had me thinking about something what she said to the mother she said very often we become mothers before we fully grow up the woman so the little girl often runs the woman's life and this had me thinking about how you know biologically in terms of reproduction there's this pressure to have children like 25 27 29 and my understanding was no you have children when you've healed your wounds you have children when you sort it through your stuff and you are in a clear and open-hearted place where your broken pieces you 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 able to get peace from out of your broken pieces and you've dealt with every piece of your brokenness and you've dealt with your pain then you go on and have children otherwise your stuff you're just going to project and um, inflict onto your children and hurt and wound your children in that way so I thought that was interesting that you know Yana said she got grown round about 40 and I'm like yeah people only really just get grown round about 40 why are people having kids at 28 at 25 at 23 at 21 at 19 at 18 you only really get grown round about 40 you only really get real round about 40 and and if you are working on it and if you are willing to in you know and yet children are being brought into the world by broken parents who have not dealt with their pain of their pasts and I thought that was very you know that's the reflection I have from that what she said um, she also said kids get stuck where the wound happens so the mother left the children without explanation at some points right so she said to the mother kids get stuck where the wound happened and when you return um, the wound doesn't just go away 
Why? Because there's no accountability, there's no apology, there is no explanation as to why you abandoned us. And parents do tend to do this. They hurt you in certain ways and then they come back and, um, and, and somehow make it better without articulating and owning up and taking accountability for their misstep and their actions and they just go back to oh they they, they find strange ways to say i'm sorry but they don't actually articulate them and say i'm sorry i know that i did this to you and i wounded you and hurt you in this way and i take responsibility and I'm accountable for that and I ask for your forgiveness because then that's what breaks the wound that's what heals the wound when you acknowledge and you're accountable for the things that you did but if you do something and then you come back and you don't address the, the something that caused the wound the wound is still there you know so I thought that was interesting um, to go back again to the the thought about you know uh having kids i'll just read you what i wrote i believe you have children when you you you're grown that is when you've dealt with and healed from your issues so you you parent from clarity so you parent from peace and being healed and whole and not giving and even not giving up your life for your children, but inviting them to share your life with you until they are strong enough and grown enough to begin theirs independently from yours. That's when you have children. That's when you're ready to have children. And I also loved when Iana asked the mom not to share her abuse story um, with her children yet, which is her story which would then explain to the children why she inflicted the kind of pain that she did and wounds that she did on them. I like that she said, she didn't give, I don't give you permission to, to share that story because what will happen is that it will change the dynamic. Your children will begin to feel sorry for you and when it comes now to voicing their grievances without knowing your story, they will be soft on you they will be um you know they they'll give you the benefit of the doubt they will be they'll write some things off that they don't need to be writing off so she's and i liked that because then it means that the store her story does not get prioritized and told first but what gets prioritized is the hurt and the wounding she caused because she did not attend to her story. A child cannot know about what caused you to hurt them before they get to tell you how you wounded them. You're the adult and you caused them that wounding, that hurt because you didn't heal your stuff before you had them. So you cannot put your children in a situation where they're having to listen to what wounded you before you have to apologize and acknowledge and take accountability for the wounding and the hurting that you caused them. That's not fair. Um, you know, I wrote here that it's somehow that would be manipulation. You first have to hear me and ask for my forgiveness as the child. So I feel heard as the child and I feel like I have a voice as a child before I understand your story and then extend compassion to your story and then your story then helps me to understand oh this is why she did this to me and then your story helps me to even forgive you and let it go I felt like it would be taking liberties in the process as a parent to want to tell your story to your children that would explain why you wounded and hurt them before they get to voice their grievance to you. It would be taking liberties and manipulating the process and the progression of the process. Next up, the mother meets with the eldest son, Christian. And the question is how it felt when the mother left. And, you know, he recalls that the mother left around about 12 years old and 
without an explanation. And so, as the process is con as the process is continuing, Iyala is finding out some things like the mother saying, "Oh, we came here because we live with these adult children who won't leave the house." And actually, it's but why are your children acting like this? What ha what happened? What's the story of what happened? And the story keeps unfolding. And it's that the mother left. That's one part of the story. And um, banded her children. Very same child, which is the oldest son, who fought to protect her from their abusive father. And yet the mother abandoned this child and left and went somewhere allegedly to find a job in California. So the mother apologizes for this. And I like what Iala says about this. She says, an apology from a parent should open a way for healthy adult relationships because the scales then balance, you know, the slate is fresh. You're not stuck having to understand your parents' story before they hear your grievance of the hurt and wounding that they caused you because they did not deal with their wounds and they did not heal their wounds. Next up, Christopher and Amber, the youngest brother and this, the, the sister who's about to have a second child, 21 year old. Um, so Yala's conversing with these two and it comes up in the conversation that the mother was with an abusive man, their, their father who was selling drugs. Yala's like, hold up. So she abandoned you and she left without explanation at some point. And, it's a, and also she was in an abusive relationship with your father a man who sold drugs yet when i asked at the beginning why are you here i'm being told this whole other story this is the reason why you're here and why there's all this hurt and why the why there's all these wounds this is the reason y'all were abandoned you grew up with an abusive father a father who sold drugs and your mother was with this man and therefore your mother dishonored you and therefore hurt and wounded you in this way dishonesty dissociation from one's accountability right up until this point in the process with this family it's like there was this glossing over of why they were actually there um and Iyanla has to kind of coach them towards understanding that they have been failed by their mother they have been failed by their parents you know and Again, as I was saying last week's about last week's story with Shay, you know, our parents fail us in fail us um, in various ways that they need to be held accountable for, and and that a person's their children's acting out is indicative of how they've been failed and therefore how they are hurting and how they are wounded, um, and. Again, not talking about what you did as a parent to cause the hurt and the wounding of your children is, is this thing that parents do where it's like they want to talk about all their successes in your life, but they don't want to be held accountable for the failures and failures about things that they could control. I'm not talking about failures about things that they didn't know that they had um, lack of information about I'm talking about things that they had information about things that they could control things that they could make better decisions of decisions about and they still failed you and parents have this tendency to want to talk about their success story in relation to their children but not their failure story of here's where I succeeded with my children but here's where I failed my children dismally I probably need to have a conversation in owning up where I failed my children to in owning, owning up to where I failed my children and apologizing to them taking accountability owning up and asking for forgiveness and then some time later after that sharing my story with them and then it'll happen automatically that your children will then develop a compassion for oh 
that's why mom failed me in this way that's why dad failed me in that way because of that that which happened in their childhood to them again the question becomes what is the truth what have you been through what is the truth what have you been through and the mother did not tell the truth about abandoning her children at some point without an explanation being in an abusive relationship with the, uh, their father who happened to be a drug dealer and who would sell drugs with him and would sell drugs with him